Okay, in this screencast we're going to have a look at glucose regulation and that might be a, a really applicable um, topic to study at the moment. Uh, been close to Easter with all our Easter eggs that we've been eating or uh, all the jelly beans we might have been snacking on during the holidays. Um, as we know, um, uh, glucose is a molecule made of six carbons. Um, it's a carbohydrate. Um, it's essential for all living cells uh, for respiration. Um, so we're going to specifically look at, at how that this this um, chemicals regulated uh, in the human body um, and how we keep that optimum level so every cell can undergo cellular respiration. So first off let's just look at our, our two main molecules here and it's the start of uh, many words that start with uh, G. Um, glucose um, which we've just introduced before um, it's a source of energy for all cells uh, through cellular respiration and glycogen which is our storage molecule uh, in animals, in, in plants it's stored at starch and it's basically made of a number of glucose molecules being joined together. Next let's have a look at the organs involved here. Um, first off we have the uh, pancreas um, which is where a lot of the detection occurs. Um, has a couple of cells in here which are uh, really specific um, endocrine cells uh, which are used to detect uh, the, the levels of glucose in the blood and, and respond by releasing hormones. The liver, on the other hand, is, is where that, that glycogen is stored um, and, and it can be, uh, have, convert the glycogen to glucose or can convert the glucose to glycogen, um, whatever the, the blood level requires. Okay, so let's look first off at what happens with high blood glucose levels. So if there's lots of glucose in the blood. Um, and that causes some, some cells in the pancreas um, called beta cells. Um, to release a hormone called insulin. The insulin travels to the liver where it can cause glucose to be stored as glycogen. And if that happens, that cause is the blood glucose levels to be lowered. On the other hand, let's ha now have a look at low blood glu glucose levels. So if there's not much glucose in the blood, that causes some cells in the pancreas called alpha cells to release a hormone called glucagon. And this causes glycogen to be broken down into glucose, so making more glucose available. And if there's more glucose available, um, we have the blood glucose levels increase. So this is a really great example of how two, two different hormones might act together uh, to, to, to bring about homeostasis and keep that, that optimum level in this case optimum level of glucose. Um, if we have high blood sugar, we have insulin reacting. If we have low blood sh sugar um, happening, we have glucagon uh, occurring. So it's important to realize that um, for this to work effectively, we really need both, both hormones to be acting. Um, we, we're gonna need um, slight adjustments if it's a bit higher or a bit low to keep it as close as we can to that optimum glucose level. So as, as with many of the responses of the body, um, there, are, there can be many factors involved. Um, and that, that can, um, some of the other ones involved here might be that uh, glucose can also be stored as fat, not just as, as glycogen. Uh, adrenaline adrenaline um, can be used to increase the glucose breakdown. And the skeletal muscles can also store a, a little bit of glycogen, not, a, not, not anywhere near as much as what's occurring in the liver, but just immediate supply. So all those sort of things can be factored into the body's response as well. And I'm just going to quickly mention uh, diabetes. And there's two types of diabetes. Um, type 1 diabetes, um, which is inherited, um, is, is one where you can't produce insulin. Okay, So that really affects um, an individual's ability to, to regulate those high levels of, uh, of glucose that might occur. Um, and, and they can they can have injections of insulin to uh, help them do that. Type two diabetes um, is where the insulin actually has no effect on the target cells, and that was one that can develop over time. And basically through poor diet and lots of high uh, glucose levels, these cells can just become less tolerant, tolerant and less uh, receptive um, to insulin. Um, in, in both these cases, I, I suppose it's really important for individuals to. Um, to, to carefully monitor their diet and also to um, also monitor the, the level of glucose in the in their blood. Hopefully that's helped you uh, wrap your head around um, 
glucose regulation in the body. Good luck.